You know, it's not very often that I get to work with high-end, server-grade computer components. But today, thanks to FSP, I get to work with what is probably one of the coolest products I have ever seen. This is the FSP Twins 500 Watt Redundant PSU. Now, I will preface this video by saying yes, FSP did send me this PSU for me to use a, in a build. I am planning a server build and needed a good, reliable power supply, especially since that build is going to be storing a lot of my data. I need something with multiple forms of protections so that I don't risk losing any data due to some kind of electrical failure. So in today's video, I'm just actually going to unbox this power supply. I do want to test it out real quick. And uh, I just want to talk about it a little bit because it's actually kind of a niche product. This probably isn't the kind of power supply everyone would be buying, but I feel like a lot of people may be interested in learning about it. But enough chit chat, let's get this thing opened up. I have not unboxed it and I am super excited. This thing has like a sick like box to it. Whoa. This thing is freaking awesome. And inside we actually get two boxes. Just like that, so actually this is as far as I got when I opened it. I have not unboxed the inside yet. I've been waiting to do this video where I unbox this. So let's grab one of these out. These are, this is a high quality box. So what else do we have in here? We also have oh, another much heavier box. Again, these are much thinner boxes than I thought they'd be. So we have those and then the box is empty. Although this is a really sick box. I mean, for a PC like this, it probably should be. All right, let's start with the box with the FSP logo on it and stuff. So, we're going to just open that again. Very nice quality boxes. And yes, inside we have this, our Twins PSU. Let's get this thing out. One thing, as you can see, yes, it is not fully modular, but they actually use really high quality and thin cables, so I'm not super against that, especially once you guys see how this power supply is designed, I'm sure no, there's really no problem with that. But yeah, no, this is a standard ATX sized PSU. Really nothing crazy about it, except yes, there is actually nothing in this unit because the main feature of this power supply is in this box. Let's open this thing up, and inside here is the main event. These are the dual 500 watt PSUs that go inside of this standard ATX chassis. Each one of these is capable of delivering 500 watts to my system, because this power supply is redundant. This is a redundant PSU for the consumer. So each of these power supply modules are rated 80 plus gold and can deliver 500 watts each. In the case of a failure of one of these modules, the other one will instantly take over inside the power supply, keeping the system online. That is why I wanted this unit. For my storage and general use server that I'm going to be building, I want to make sure there is no downtime. So having a PSU like this that has multiple forms of failure protection, including that if one of these two PSUs gets unplugged, the other one instantly takes over the entire load, is amazing. Ooh, accessories. I wanna know what it comes with. All right, power supply screws. And then of course, our two power supply cables. I don't bracket. We have a Molex to floppy. And then we have a USB 2.0 external connector to an internal which is actually what I believe is for, there's a USB 2.0 header on the power supply, which I believe is what this is now for. Yeah, basically you can connect it to an internal header on your motherboard if you want, or to an external jack, or if your motherboard has an internal USB header. First things first, let's get this thing built and tested. So let's see, these units, I'm just gonna say, are freaking adorable. Now, my only problem is I can see that it might be a little loud because of these small fans, but honestly, I don't think that's a problem with units that are this, well, versatile. All right, so as you can see, the connectors on these PSUs are just the standard gold finger design. And basically, all these do is they just, let me see if we can figure this out first try. I believe they just slot in just like that. And then there's a little audible click and then we can slot the other one in. This is so cool. I'm having so much fun. I am so happy that they actually agreed to send me this because, well, I'm me and I didn't think they would, but 
Here we go for the second PSU. It should just, just like that, and done. Both of our 500 watt 80 plus gold power supplies are installed. Now, one thing to note is that no, it is not a combined 1000 watt unit. This is a 500 watt PSU. It is redundant, meaning that again, if one of these units, let's say, accidentally pops out, the unit is still completely active and the system will not shut down. Now again, one thing I will say, because I feel like it's very important to mention, this is a standard ATX PSU. It's a little on the longer side, but what can you expect from a unit that has literally two PSUs inside of it? But it is standard ATX. It has standard ATX mounting holes and can be mounted in any case that supports this length of standard ATX PSU. And for a redundant PSU, that is awesome because normally to get a redundant unit like this, you have to have a specially designed chassis or motherboard, and it's usually a server build and usually has to go on a rack. So this is really nice for the home user. Of course, in case anyone's looking for one of these, I will have them linked in the description below. Now, I wanna get these cables undone and I wanna see what we have. Now, I did check the website before receiving this unit just to see what kind of connectors I had so I could plan out my build. And it actually has a very good range of connectors. So we have our 24 pin naturally, and obviously a pretty decent length of it too for bigger builds. All right, so we have one Molex and SATA chain. It's got two Molexes and two SATAs on that one. Then we have a full SATA chain that has four more SATAs. Again, SATAs are very important for this storage server, so we definitely need a lot of SATA power. We have one 8-pin CPU. I believe we have a second one somewhere. Yes, two 8-pin CPU connectors, our USB header. We'll talk about that later. And of course, our 2x6 plus 2 GPU connector. So, I think I've showed off this unit properly outside of a build. What I want to do now is show you guys this thing in action. This is the FSP Guardian software for the Twins power supply units. As I mentioned before, this PSU does actually have a USB 2.0 header to connect to your motherboard, which enables the smart features of this power supply, including FSP Guardian. This is a pretty awesome software. It lets you see the activity and the usage of everything in your system, as well as monitor things like temps, voltages, and actually power cost if you put in a cost of power. If you go to our settings here, we can actually put in how much our electricity bill costs. Uh, I don't pay for power here, so it's zero dollars for me. But um, you know, you can put in how many, how much money one kilowatt hour costs. It's usually something you know, on average in the US like 0.17, like 17 cents. So you can put something like that in and then the system will actually tell you how much money it is costing you to run this system to your power bill, which is pretty insane. It also tells you the temperature of your module or modules in your unit. But as you can see, we see the power draw of the module, which is something that's really nice to see. You never really know the power draw of your system until you can really see it or unless you use like some kind of meter or something connected to the actual socket on the wall. So it's really nice to actually be able to just see our wattage and everything else as well as our voltage lines and, and what the power of each one of our voltage rails is. This actually will allow us to check if, if we're having some kind of failure we can actually see in here what is happening if we're getting the wrong voltage to our let's say our 12 volt rail or something like that and we can also see the fan speed of our system so we can see when the wattage goes up the fan speed will go up right now it's at 5784 rpm or average around there uh because it is a small i believe 40 millimeter fan it definitely has to spin very fast to keep this uh pretty insane unit cool but again it's sitting at a cool 26 degrees celsius so that is definitely really great i just want to talk about this uh, software really quick because it's just really cool i love smart power supplies it's actually the first one i've had uh been able to keep i've worked with them before i built a unit for my friend that had a smart power supply in it and oh man i love them so this is definitely a welcome feature especially in such a high end and you know professional grade product that can be used actually in the home environment it's very nice to have something like this to monitor things especially if you're using it for like important storage situations or in my case even like streaming i definitely want to know what is failing at any given point if something were to fail although again these are pretty high quality modules it's very unlikely that they will fail but let's say they did hey guys we're back here so uh, I wanted to do a quick test of some of the claims that uh, FSP has made about this power supply. This may be very stupid, but I have decided to make a modification to one of these two units. Shh, nobody tell FSP. Now, warning in advance, disclaimer, bold letters, explosions, everything. 
Huge editing budget, explosions, pow, disclaimer, big yellow triangles. Under no circumstance should you ever open up or modify a power supply unit. You can literally die. There is a 120 or 240 volts running through this unit depending on what country you live and those capacitors inside retain that charge. Seriously, don't mess around with PSUs. I am a professional and I know what I'm doing. And I took the proper safety precautions. These are like actual professional, you know, rubberized gloves, whatever. I don't know, I bought them. They said they were good for electricity and so, you know, again, never open up a PSU, but let me take these off real quick because I am no longer working inside of a power supply. So what I have done is in this unit, I have actually disconnected the fan from the internal header to create an artificial fan failure. Why did I do this? Well, I want to test a couple things. First things first, on the back of each of these units, there is a light slash button. It is actually a button and a light and uh, it lights up different colors depending on the functionality of the unit. If the unit is fully functional, it will allegedly light up green. If the unit is not functioning, it'll light up red. And it'll also actually kind of beep at you. I, I haven't actually tested that yet, which is what we're going to do now. I wanna see if it actually can detect that there is a fan failure and that is the only issue from just a disconnected header. The power supply itself is fully functional the only problem I've created with it is that its fan is disconnected. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put the working unit in the left side of this chassis and the broken unit in the right side. I'm going to plug them both in and see what happens. This is what is basically called a power supply tester, whatever you wanna call it. it all it is is a 24 pin female connector to, and then there's just like a single wire in two of the connectors on the 24 pin. This is basically just to allow a power supply to turn on without actually being connected to an actual motherboard. Uh, just for testing the unit to make sure it's actually at least functional in some way. But what I wanna do is see that without any software, without anything else, does this unit have hardware security to protect against something like a fan failure? So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually plug in each one of these units. Starting with our working unit. And then, oh. Well, that's interesting. So, although one's plugged in, the other one's already lighting up red. I think that just believes it's unplugged, though. Let me plug in the not working unit. Yes, now they are both green. They're both blinking green. So, I'm going to plug in the tester, which should instantly turn on the unit. There we go. The unit is on. Let's see what happens. So one of the fans is spinning, the other one is not. Let's see if the unit recognizes that there is a fan failure. Oh, the light has turned red. And there we go. Let's press that button to turn off that alarm. So yes, when there is a failure detected in one of the modulars inside this unit, it will make what is a pretty loud sound, but it's, it's to get your attention so that you know one of your units is not working. So this unit is not working. As you can see, the light is glowing red. That is actually kind of cool. And what's great is I can actually just unplug it and take it out and the unit remains on. Now, this is fine and all with just a tester, but this isn't actually drawing any real wattage. I wanna see, because FSP claims that each one of these 500 watt PSUs can handle the entire load of this 500 watt power supply. And again, I do believe them, but I kind of want to see for myself. So I'm going to build up a quick little test rig and to test that claim that should draw around three to 500 watts under a full load that we can actually see if this one, what is a relatively small unit, can handle the full load of a system. So let's go ahead and unplug this unit. And let's set up a quick test bench. All right, so here we have our motherboard and platform here. This is our B550 motherboard with a Ryzen 3 3300X that is overclocked using this pretty beefy cooler that I just have sitting around, 16 gigs of RAM. But that's not what this system is for. This system is just to hold our graphics card, which is going to be the Vega 64. Yes, this card with its two eight pins is capable of drawing upwards of 300 watts under full load, and that is exactly what we're going to put it under. All right, so our system is hooked up and I have the power supply in front to show you that yes, only one of the units is connected. We have our whole system, so we've got a Vega 64 and our 3300X all hooked up, and we have Windows boot drive, and let's turn this thing on. 
That was the quickest boot I've ever had in my life. What the heck? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to launch Ida 64. And I'm actually going to launch the FSP Guardian software that we talked about before. As a side note, just because I can, I'm going to launch OBS. So using FSP software, we can actually see the power draw of our thing as we've seen before. And I'm just going to open up an Ida 64 system stability test. I'm going to turn off CPU because I'm actually using it to record. And I'm just going to stress our GPU, which is our main wattage eater so what we're gonna do is we're going to start the stress test which will bring our gpu up to like 100 percent usage and it will slow down our system a little bit and we can see our wattage spike right past 200 watts past 250 up to 300 watts wow a 380 spike and as you can see our system is well still turned on so yeah i mean i kind of figured it's, it's hard to advertise something like that to especially people who would be using this in like server builds or, you know, really important builds that need redundant power supplies. It'd be hard to, you know, get by with a unit that doesn't actually support the full 500 watt load. So that's actually really impressive. A single one of these tiny little 80 plus gold slot in hot swappable units can actually handle the entire load of the system. That is amazing. No, definitely never disconnect your fan in a power supply. I just really wanted to see what the unit would do, and I couldn't think of another way to cause an actual failure with the unit. These are really high quality units, so it's actually a pretty hard to cause a failure with them, besides disconnecting a fan, because again, without breaking, I don't want to break this thing. They're pretty expensive, so I can't really afford to be breaking them now, especially with all the future cooperation I want to do with FSP, but that's at the point. So, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed looking at this power supply. I plan to use it in a bunch of more videos and uh, to actually use it in some one or two insane builds, including a dedicated server build and also probably a dedicated streaming PC that I want to have full redundancy, including capture cards, internet, and power supply. So, stick around for that. But that's the point. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.